Good day everyone. If you're coming over from a typical object-oriented programming environment into Rust, you might have the following question: How, do, how does Rust handle? The, uh, you know, you know already that Rust cannot do um, inheritance uh, of structs, where structs is, for instance, uh, very similar to in let's take for instance C Sharp, where a class can contain uh, encapsulated data and also functionality and with a struct in in rust a struct itself does it not have it only has data there's no methods all right you can extend a struct through or implement uh, on implement using implementations on it but a struct itself um, has only got data and this data can either be public or private now if one follows the the whole idea of uh, how to use objects now, now remember, uh, objects is something within itself. Object-oriented programming is just one paradigm, one way of implementing this idea of how to access and use objects in, in a programming language. Object-oriented programming doesn't have the, the final say of what, what actually defines an object. Um, Rust also has the concept of objects through its structs. If we're going to stick with uh, um, keeping our data fully encapsulated and hidden from the outside world, um, then all our, 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 let's say, our fields, our variables on our struct are all going to remain private. They're not going to be public. But I'll, I'll give you an idea of what we're going to do now. So what it really comes down to is um, I've taken the liberty of uh, creating some code or writing some code for us already. Um, we're going to have classes let's say two structs um, the one is going to be a citizen and the other one is going to be a foreigner a citizen as in a citizen of a country and a foreigner somebody that's external to the to, to the country that we're dealing with so a citizen of our country we're going to want to know their first name and surname and a foreigner we're also going to want to know their first name and surname and then a citizen we want to also know what is their address um, within our country. A foreigner, we don't care about the address. Let's say in our example that we're going to be using now. Under structs, I uh, created a, a directory called structs and uh, inside that create a, a file called modrs and then that re-exports uh, locations and persona which are two other files under structs. So on persona, or let's go to locations first. Under locations we've got a struct called address and under persona we've got um, a struct called name, a struct called citizen, and a struct called foreigner. You could say that, for instance, a citizen has a first name and a surname. That, true, all right, so you can type in your uh, first name, and that is of type string, uh, and surname, and that is of type string. But the problem with doing that is that on foreigner, we also want a first name and a surname, so we're going to copy paste this over. If ever we decide that we want a middle name as well, all right, so let's just copy that over. So both of them now have a first name and a surname, but now somebody comes to us and says, okay, but we need a uh, middle name as well. So we can go and add middle name, then we realize, oh, but we've got to do it at the bottom as well. So that is not a very good, that's copying code, that's not a very good uh, solution. This is where we come down to something called composition, uh, which is a, another principle that one should use when doing, for instance, uh, dealing with objects and especially with uh, object-oriented programming, you shouldn't always be inheriting from something else. You should rather use the pattern uh, referred to as composition. I made another video entirely on that. I will link to that uh, in the description below. You can have a look at that, why one should be using composition and not inheriting everything. Now, if one takes the inheritance out of it and purely just looks at composition, then Rust can do anything that, that for instance, a C Sharp or C++ can do, where, where you, instead of inheriting, rather using composition. We're saying that our citizen is composed of uh, our other struct called name. All right, and the same applies to our foreigner. It is also composed of a name. So if you want to add a middle name, we just add it to name here, and then both citizen and foreigner is going to get our middle name. And uh, that's good. Now, if we come here to our main, let's say for instance, we want to create a new, let's get rid of this print line. We want to create a new citizen. I'll call it new citizen. New citizen equals 
and we now want to access struct or the persona model module inside the structs module so we should say structs but it can't can't get to structs and the reason for that is we need to say that we want to import it we want to use it all right so we say mod structs and our citizen now with without calling a method directly on it for instance like in other languages you'll have a constructor um, rust as such doesn't really have constructors well, it, you can use a destructor on Rust by implementing the drop trait. We're going to be looking at traits just now. Now you would say, for instance, okay, uh, bring in address and name and then create a new instance of each one of those. What you actually want to do, make life simpler for us, is on our persona, we basically want to take our struct and we want to add a method to it, which is called new. Now new is the uh, Rust idiomatic way of adding, for instance, a constructor. So if you want to create a new instance of citizen, you're going to create a, or we create a method called new. It's going to pass in a first name, a surname, as well as an address struct uh, or object, an instance of an address struct. Then we can say, all right, so inside of it, we're going to take that first name and surname and create a new name object, create then a new citizen instance and add that name to it. And now incoming address, we're going to add that to it as well. Now our incoming address, I've made it here um, as an uh, immutable pointer. And uh, the reason for that is you might want to use it later on down further after you've uh, declared it. Uh, you don't have to do that, but uh, it's it's gonna it's easier just to do things that way. But that means that if we all have got an immutable reference to it, and we want to take a a copy of that and add it to our new object, you could just directly take the reference and add it to our object. But that's going to bring in lifetimes and all that sort of stuff, which is far beyond what we actually want to do. We just want to take that address, take a copy of it, add it to our new object and return our new object. All right. So our two owned here is complaining um, because of the fact that address, we can't make a copy of address. And the reason for that is if we come up here to address, uh, we got to derive uh, a clone for it. Uh, we're going to need that later as well. But OK, so is now happy so we can we can now with two owned we we basically saying we want to take that object uh that, which is uh, actually a let's say a reference um and we actually want to make a copy of that uh, so we want to take ownership of it yet leave the original intact and the way that that's done is actually to make a clone so if you want to take a copy of something but leaving the original completely intact well they i just say take a copy of it we, we're actually taking ownership of a new version of that okay so if we come back to mania and so now we can say new citizen and then we call new and it's going to ask us for a first name surname and address through the magic of uh, copy paste, I can quickly just paste us here a new address. All right, so that we're creating a new address struct over here, and but the first name and surname we'll type in. Let's call it uh, John Smith, and then address is address. Uh, oh, sorry, that's got to be a reference, and because it's a reference, that allows us to at a later point to be able to say address dot. Okay, now the thing here is. I've declared all these fields as private, which means I can't directly just create an instance of this, ad uh, this address object. I also need a new. But for simplicity, I'm not going to create a new that takes all these parameters and then populates it and so forth. I'm going to come here and make all these. Our, our fields are now directly made public, so we've got direct access to them. So in our main, we can set them directly. OK, so we've created a new citizen. And we can now print out citizen. Um, we're going to be looking at um, a, a vector, or a list, in which we're going to add uh, citizens as well as another data type, which we're going to get to. This is probably the bit that you really want to see down the line. Um, but we're going to get that to that in a moment. That's using traits. But let me just quickly do a print here before we move on to that idea. So let's print out our first name. All right, for the person for a new citizen. Now remember, first name is not being given. We can't access it from from outside uh, of our struct itself. 
So we're going to get an error in the next case. So if I say, or let's print out a surname, not first names, quicker to type. So we want to take new citizen, and on our new citizen, we expect a property name dot surname. But uh, we have not exposed it to the outside world. This is going to give us a compile error. Because name is uh, hidden due to encapsulation, it's not. We don't have direct access to it, and uh, through the law of Demeter as well, it says that you shouldn't be giving access to these objects directly, like we are in, or trying to do. So, question is, how are we going to return our our surname? Well, trucks uh, in Rust don't directly have properties. We got to write them ourselves. They just know um, functions. So we're going to create a function, and we're going to call it get uh, surname. Uh, if I don't know if you know how to use self yet, but we are dealing with self. So in other words, our current instance of our object, of our citizen. So new, okay, is a static function, uh, which you can call directly citizen new. Um, but if we put self in here, all right, then it's a method of our of our struct, and we're actually referring to an actual instance. Of a struct so we put a reference to self there okay and we're returning uh, our first name is, our surname is a string okay so we're going to now return self and now internally we have access to our own fields so self dot name dot first name oh, sorry surname oh, sorry semicolon yeah all right so if we come to this side now we don't need to say name.surname or we can't say but we can call get surname on it all right we've created ourselves a little property getter there uh, move surname as type string which does not implement the copy trait oh okay so the same thing applies here um, as what i said just now so we don't want to return the actual surname we want to return a our own instance of it oops you could say to string, whatever the case may be. Okay. Oh, it doesn't look like it had to string there, but okay. And uh, all right, and it returns Smith for us. What we, we actually want is to be able to have, let's say, an, another, well, we've got foreigner, for instance. Let's say we want to add to a list. Uh, we're going to create on main a new list, which is going to contain a lot of structs for struct instances for us a lot of objects which all have first names and surnames so a citizen and a foreigner are two different classes if i can call it two different objects they don't have the same signature okay they consider two different things so they can't be added to a list of a specific data type uh, a citizen or a foreigner but somehow we want to meld the two together so something must be common between the two some common interface and that gives it away like in object-oriented programming you will have a common interface which you can add to some generic list for instance now we want to do the same thing in rust so what we're going to do is say let um, let just call it uh, a list of let's say name name objects like the commonality is names and it's a vec now we don't have an object well we we do have a struct called name all right so we can say well let's try a struct um, of persona and name all right so we'll under a whole lot of names uh, equals okay so we've got names so we want to add our new citizen which does have uh, uh, internally an object of name okay uh, so it's names dot push. Uh, sorry. Well, firstly, names must be uh, mutable, so we can push to it. And it is names dot push, and we want to add new citizen, new citizen to it. Okay, and it complains. Okay, because we're not actually adding persona dot name. As uh, yeah, we're adding new citizen. That's not what we want to do. All right, so you can say new citizen, the, the name is not exposed, so we can't add name that way. Okay, so how are we going to go about doing that through some common interface between a name and a foreigner? Let's create a new foreigner so we can add them both to our uh, vector here. All right, and we're going to, okay, now a foreigner, remember, has also got a new on it. Um, I did previously create that, but it doesn't have an address. 
So let's say um, let's create a I don't know Gustav West. Okay, and he's a foreigner. We want to add both our new citizen and our for new foreigner to a vector and a new foreigner to a vector which is interested in names so so both new citizen and new foreigner has got to some have to have something which is in common uh, that gives us our names uh, foreigner so like i said uh, that will be an interface now in rust that can be accomplished through a trait now traits are basically just interfaces traits can uh, have uh, functions on them and uh, default functions and that's what we're going to be using to solve our current problem so if we come back to persona here so on both our uh, foreigner and our citizen we want to have something which is common and public in both cases and that is going to be a trait a new file and we're just going to call it traits.rs Oops, traits. And we're going to create a pub trait. Uh, let's call it common name. Uh, come on. Trait. Okay, and our new trait is going to have our properties that we need to implement on our structs. So let's say. Um, Okay, first name and surname. All right. Now, now that is a valid trait already. But what we want to do is we want to add this trait to a struct and reference these new fields, the or these new functions, these properties. Okay, when we have an actual instance of our trait. So, in other words, when we create a new instance of a uh, let's say a citizen, uh, John Smith, we want to be able to use that, our variable, whatever we named it, new citizen, we want to be able to say new citizen dot get first name. And in order to do that, we're actually dealing, in other words, with our ourself, our current instance of our citizen object. So in order to do that in Rust, we'll say uh, self and self, yeah. Otherwise, they are static uh, functions again, um, like our news were, constructors were. Um, okay, so we add new year. Oh, sorry, this should be foreigner. Okay, so we've got a new citizen and a new foreigner. But yes, we've still got a problem here because uh, we're trying to add this struct. So what we actually want to add, okay, is our trait, our interface. Okay, but uh, so we're going to go through this uh, methodically. So we're going to say add traits uh, dot common name. All right. And okay, it's not a way of traits, so we've got to bring in traits. All right, and now it's giving us an error, yeah. Um, so it's a way that we're trying to add our common name trait or interface, but it's telling us here about uh, DIN, dynamic dispatching, and so forth. And later we're going to need to get to boxing. But let's first just uh, copy this common name and we go to our personas, and we are now going to implement on our citizen and our foreigner. Uh, let's just expand this uh, so we can take out get surname. So we just got our new, our constructor, our new function and a static function. And then we're going to say implement our trait, okay, for our citizen. Okay. And uh, it's not, it doesn't know where traits are. And uh, so we say use create traits. And now he's telling us that we're missing our implementations for our get first name and get surname. Um, so you can type it in or in, in Visual Studio Code, yeah, you can uh, just implement it. Uh, where are we? Oops. Implement them. Okay. So he's gone and added them for us. What we want to do now, remember, because we've got self. Now, self means we actually want to talk to our instance of citizen. So we actually have a, 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 a name object, which has actually got data in it. 
all right, because of the way that we created it originally. So we're talking to self now, an actual instance. So we say self dot name dot first name. Okay, and the same will apply down here. We say self dot name dot surname. And this whole thing we can take and we'll just pull it down and we want to implement it on foreigner as well. Right, I just change the citizen to foreigner. So now we've got some commonality between foreigner and citizen. They both implement common name. So we want a vector of common name. And so while it tells us here that it requires DIN in front of it, all right, and it's got a sizing problem. So what that means is we need to take this and actually stick it on the heap. So we want to create a box uh, which takes it for, and sticks stuff on the heap for us. Okay, so we've got a vector of that now. And then when we push our new citizen and new foreigner, we want to box that too. We want to tell them, okay, so what we've done now is, oh, well, let me just finish typing. Uh, oops. Okie dokie. Uh, okay. So, uh, why is new foreigner a problem? Uh, probably made a spelling mistake. Oh, yeah, new foreigner, yeah. All right. So, we've added a new citizen and a new foreigner, or a citizen and a foreigner, to a vector. Okay, with a common thing between them being our trait common name, a common interface, common name. So what we can do is we can print out, for instance, let's say our second element in our vector. Well, let's not say second element. Let's rather do a search for it. So let me just copy paste that out. Okay, so let's do a iter, do some functional programming here. Um, let uh, option matched uh, equal names dot iter. Uh, dot find all right so what we want to do let's call it uh, in for name where in dot uh, let's say get surname equals uh, let's find west uh, All right. Okay. Uh, matched. All right. And then if he's found it, if option matched dot is sum. Um, so if you're dealing with options, you've got is sum and is num, none, uh, which evaluate to true. So if is sum, so did we find something? Uh, yes. All right. And then we want to print out what we found. Option match dot unwrap. Okay, unwrap is to extract out of our option, our object, uh, unwrap dot, uh, let's say, get first name. So it's going to search for West and it's going to print out Gustav. Uh, that, shouldn't, that should be an S there. And if it didn't find anything, uh, it must say not found. And person is giving us an error here. Uh, uh, okay, so we are going to need a name here. Uh, sorry. All right, and that should then be. Uh, return a to owned on that to owned on that and I think we're gonna have yeah the same down here so we are returning um, a new copy of our first name okie dokie and there we go all right so if we run that okay and it's found it for us so that's basically it um, what we've done is we, ha we have shown that Rust can through, well, using an, a common interface, um, it uses uh, uh, traits for that, 
and uh, using a common interface you can create a vector which contains that uh, uh, objects of that common interface you can add them to it and then read it out later and uh, yeah I think that's it uh, I'm not sure if I missed anything I think that gives us an idea I hope that helped you and uh, till my next video see you goodbye